Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. You know, this, this text, there's so many different ways I could kind of narrow in. And one of the ways I was trying to bring in is, you know, we're, we're celebrating tomorrow the birth of our nation. But I just couldn't find a way to just weave it in. The more and more I prayed about it and the more and more I thought about it, I couldn't, well, I shouldn't be like this writing. I don't write, I type <laughs> on the computer when I do sermons. So here we go. You think about this nation. I remember back in 1976, I was living in a small town of Bad Axe, Michigan, about 3,500 people, farm town. It was near nothing. And the celebration they had for the 200th anniversary of our nation was grand. For a small little town, the patriotism was just oozing out. I mean, Michigan even had license plates that were red, white, and blue. There was a flag. The celebration was everywhere. Wherever you're from, you probably had the same type of celebrations in 1976. Realize we never left the state <laughs> very much at all. We stayed within the confines of Michigan. Speed forward to today. Turn on your TV. The sights that we will see <laughs> I never thought we'd ever see. I never thought we'd have people that are bewildered about Roe versus Wade getting overturned. Yeah, I brought it up. Sorry. No, not really. I never thought we'd be so divided in this country. I don't, I don't care which political persuasion you are, because God is not a Republican or a Democrat. But I do know this. God is working. He has been working. Since the onset of sin, and he is still working. But we get distracted. I think when you grow up in a really small town where there's not a whole lot to do, got one stoplight. I love that simpler life. No traffic. Whereas today, our roads are jammed. And sometimes we lose focus. You know, you've, I don't know if you've ever heard this. Multiply your ministry, pastor. Pastors are often told that. I, I grew up, my dad's a pastor, a lot of you know. So I grew up kind of hearing that. And it makes sense. Multiply the ministry. You know, the pastor has a joyous calling that a man can never have, the most joyous, to share Jesus with the world, and especially those that do not know him. you think of all the people that you run that a pastor runs across in his lifetime 
and the effect. Sometimes you get to see it, sometimes you don't. And then you look at Jesus' ministry of the twelve. He was multiplying his ministry by the twelve. Choosing twelve disciples and sent them out. And then in our text today, and I kind of want to clarify something because sometimes you hear 72, sometimes you hear 70. Some scholars think 72, some think 70. At least 70 went out. (laughs) Don't get stuck on a number. Don't get distracted. But 70 sent out. And then you think, why did Jesus initially send the 12? Did he need to send the 12? Did he need to use those people? Couldn't he have done it another way? Couldn't he have just gone, boop, done. We're done. Go to the end. (laughs) Did you ever think about that? But he didn't. You know, sometimes we like to put those disciples up in here, and we know by reading they weren't they weren't perfect people. They were sinful people. I mean, look at Peter denying Jesus. He uses sinful, frail. Broken people to spread the gospel of Christ. Did it in the 12, did it in the 70. And then as you look at the text, they would bring a word of peace. Just as pastors today will bring a word of peace. That we are reconciled to God. By the cross of Jesus. And then they would eat and drink at what is provided in the house. And later we will eat and drink the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Establishing that intimate fellowship. They were doing it in that in that place with Christ's people. We do it here with Christ's people. They went to heal the sick. The 70 were sent where Christ himself was coming to restore what was broken in creation. And he does that here. We hear and receive the forgiveness of sins. Life and salvation. Pastors today not only pray for the sick, but also come with a medicine of immortality that is only found in Christ Jesus. We proclaim, they proclaim that the kingdom of God is here. Christ is here. He is here in his word. He is here in and under the bread and the wine. He is here in baptism or water and word come together as a sacrament where the bread and the wine combine with the word. He is there. The 70 disciples speak for Jesus as pastors do today. The one who hears you hears me. See, the world's got a problem with that. They have a problem with how Jesus works. They won't say it. 
But they have a problem that God is using frail humans, pastors. Just like he did with the 12 disciples. Just like we did with the 70. To tell people about Jesus. To tell people about his saving works. And here's the kicker. The one who rejects you rejects me. You know, one of the reasons, I, I'm, I've been a pastor for, I think it's been eight, nine years. I'm 59 years old, so obviously not the first career. I grew up with my dad as a pastor. That's all I, that's all I knew. We were always pretty much right next to the church. So I pretty much grew up in the church. My first calling as a pastor was when I was 18 years old. Well, guess what I did? I ran the other way. <laughs> ah, no. <laughs> Again later, I can't remember what age it was. I was like, nope. And again later. And then finally, it's like God had everything set and right. And then I thought it was a good idea. You know the reason I didn't want to be one? Rejection. I saw it. I like to say I saw the good, bad, and the ugly of ministry. <laughs> but they're not rejecting me. They're rejecting Jesus. And if they're rejecting Jesus, they're really rejecting God. Because it is his word I proclaim. Not my own. When they rejected the 70, it meant rejecting God's only Savior, His only way of salvation. There's not another way. You know, sometimes in a, a pastor's lifetime, you get to see some pretty wondrous things. But you don't get to see anything like Jesus saw Satan fall like a lightning from heaven. You don't. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> Compared to that, it's been sometimes kind of boring. But no. It's kind of exciting when you see the emotion in people. Um, I'll, I'll say it this way. When you see the repentance in people. And you see it in their eyes. When you see someone that was lost that comes back and comes before the Lord and the Lord has open arms for them. This is why I'm kind of kind of weave this. Our nation's broken. But let me give you a hint. It's been broken for a very long time. My grandfather used to tell me stories when he worked in a store and he told me how they made more money. It's before packaged goods. They would put the cheap cookies on the bottom. They would put the expensive cookies on the top and they put it on a scale charging for the expensive cookies. This nation has been broken for a very, very long time. My grandfather has been dead for 20, 20 over 25 years. I can't remember exactly how long. It's been a very, very long time. We've had gangsters in the streets, shootings. Goes way, way back. Corruption. It's nothing new. So what do we do? Do we say, hey, the pastor, go multiply the ministry. 
Do you want me to multiply the ministry? This is where you interact. Do you want me to multiply the ministry? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Some people know what's coming. <laughs> Guess what? You're it. I don't mean like tag you're it. I mean, that's what we're doing is we're, I am equipping you to go out and talk to people. Now, now do you go out and sell everything and get, you got to get rid of everything? No. I mean, if God's asking you to do that, sure. If he's asking you to go to the seminary, great. But he might be asking you to talk to your neighbor. To share the love of Jesus with your neighbor. He might be asking you just to hold the door for someone and show the love of Christ. I know that sounds simple. I was at Ace Hardware the other day and it was kind of funny. One guy was really, really talkative. There was another guy in line. You could tell, and he even said it. Don't, he didn't say, don't you dare talk to me, but it was like, it was like taboo. He had like a force field around him. Do not come near me. I am not in a conversational mood. <laughs> Ever run into people like that? But then have you ever got to knock on the door? And I don't mean literally knock on the door. But that little shove, that little thing that Jesus says, hey, don't take it to heart. Just try talking to him. And then little by little, the, the walls come down. In one day, you get to share the love of Jesus with somebody who isn't, a Christian. I've had that happen. Sometimes it takes a while to break the wall down. And the greatest thing is, is Jesus has those works for you way ahead of time. All we gotta do is be patient and be faithful. Remember the day when a pastor would stand up here and he'd, he'd shout and yell at you guys and, you know, you need to go out and spread the gospel. And then you see people on the street corners that scare people with that fear. And I think of Jesus, how we sent out the 12, how the 70 were sent out. There's peace among them. Great. If there's not, if they do not accept. If they, if they revile you, revile the word. They do not revile you. They revile God. Walk away. Dust your sandals off. Not everyone wants to hear that good news. You know the good news. You know that Satan's hands are tied. He can't harm you. And you know, and this is where we should rejoice, that our names are written in the book of life. We are saved. Be faithful. When God calls you, like the 70 or the 12, we answer that call. The harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. But we remain faithful to Jesus. 
because we know we have forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Amen.